My name is Notepad, and, I'm, and I write games for fun. What are we doing today? Well, today we're looking at what I like to call PG's Dusty Closet. Also, I should change this because... 5, 5 to 50. TG's Dusty Closet is a fairly simple premise. The idea of, well, we're going to explore some of traditional 4chan traditional games. Games that have been made over the years. Now, I have a interesting history with TG because I love it. I think it's probably one of the best boards to actually discuss, well, used to be anyway, to discuss traditional games in general. However, over the years, we've seen a lot of projects start and a lot of projects die. Some of which are for good reason, others of which kind of fade away. Overall, there's three kinds of projects that emerge from TG. You end up with the Ideas Guys projects, which are, let's, let's get a, a broad idea, a broad concept, and we'll just spitball a million ideas. No one will actually write anything down, but we'll call it our homebrew. You have the really dedicated guys who make a single thing and keep posting about it. Games such as... Music? There we go. <laughs> Games such as, uh, I wouldn't say Lancer necessarily, but Lancer definitely has some peculiarities and history with TG in more ways than one. Uh, finally, we have games that get adopted from TG. The kind of usually from the first batch. The games that start off as a TG project, don't really go anywhere, and then someone or some or a group of people pick it up and roll with it. That's where I got my start. I took an idea and I rolled with it. See what I could do with it, which started off with Blood Coin and Steel, or at that point, Song of Ice and Fire role playing game, second edition. However, there are also a lot of games that don't really see the light of day, who don't get that kind of attention needed. As you can see here on my screen right now, I have a certain game, I have a certain one called Disney Villains Victorious. However, we're going to be looking at four games ish. I say ish for a variety of reasons. So we're going to be looking at Disney Villains Victorious, which emerged in 2016. Uh, we're going to be looking at Catastrophe from about 2014, and Night Shift, which I believe came around 2016. I believe. Don't quote me on that. We're also going to be taking a look at Nier Agaku. And bring up my handy dandy PDF near Agaku here, which is also a TG original project that was made by somebody else off TG, but I'll get to that in a moment. However, first off, I want to kind of go over what this is going to be more than anything. One of the core ideas behind a lot of the uh, TG projects out there is that a lot of them don't go anywhere. They die, they fizzle out, or worse, just cease to exist. Or, or, or they get adopted elsewhere and abandon the TG monkey, monkey uh, such as Halo Mythic, for example, which is arguably the only t Halo tabletop RPG out there still. That was that spawned on, you guessed it, TG. However, Rightly so, they have decided to jump ship on that. Now, I'm not one to you know, call people out being like, you are ruining it for everybody else, boo hiss, boo hiss. However, it gets harder to track some of them, So, because let's, let's go to 1D4 chain. 1D4 chain, uh, well, in an ideal world, <laughs> in an ideal world, is the kind of the repository for everything TG related. However... Is that the case? Not really. 1D4chan is pretty much an archive of TG past, probably roughly from, I would say, about 2008 to about 2014 is when you see a lot of what we would consider classic TG, or TG Golden Age, emerge from. Now, let's see what the newest uploads. Uh, looks like we got some pictures uploaded that we don't really have any new pages 
Looks like a lot of right thread stuff. However, as you can see, so our our basic ones, uh, 1D4 chain actually almost died about, uh, I'd say about two, three months ago at this point. Almost died. It went offline. Hello, phone. It went completely offline and no one really knew what was going on. However, so I took it upon myself to kind of go through and see what I could find for homebrew. Or right, let's take a take a look at awesome pages. Oh. Oh, wow. You'll also notice TG's roots do fall pretty firmly in its 40k heritage. Which you can roughly assume to be about probably half of these things always end up being 40k related in one way or another. And a lot of memes end up being, well, 40k related. Is that good? Well, it depends on how much you actually like 40k. If you don't like 40k, well, you know, if you like your 40k, you're going to get them. So, if we can see here, fan, fan books, homebrew games, here's all the various, uh, yeah, you know, this is a, this is a fucking old one. So, Busty Barbarian Bimbos, uh, this game actually went legit, and the Kickstarter and everything, it started on, you guessed it, da 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 uh, it started on TG. Uh, where is it? Engine Heart, probably TG, one of TG's probably most famous games that came out of it was Engine Heart in 2013, and everyone loved Engine Heart. Nobody bought Engine Heart, uh, which sucks because it's actually a fairly interesting idea behind it. But it started on TG. Uh, let's see, in all of these. Uh, well, yeah, Savage Age of Sigmar, oh god, Catastrophe, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, we have Stalker of the RPG, which I could go over for a while on the various Stalker RPGs, fun fact, they all kind of suck. Adeptus Evangelion came out from TG and spawned from them. Uh, if we also look here, we also see Purgatoria and Car Lesbians, Purgatoria, City of Angels, uh... Let's, let's actually check out their Kickstarter and see if they actually made it. Uh... Oh, that's... This isn't... No, it looks like it came out in 2017, hopefully. Exactly, see, so we're getting this started on. Drumroll, please. TG. Uh, let's see if we cancel out. Car Lesbian's another, I would say, barely quote-unquote famous ones. Can't fight tactics, what the fuck? Yeah, I know. Like A lot of these end up fairly they exist and then they quickly leave. Because out of all of these these are not all of them. At all. There's a lot of games that just don't make it. That fade away. As quickly as they come. Uh, let's see if I can't find one at the top of my head. I'm not going to do a... Uh... There we go. Yeah, Raiders and Radon. It... You have a, a an unfortunate time where it's on TV tropes and on 4chan. Oh god, 4H Chan's TH board. You know it's a good one when they've spelled that wrong. But Raiders and Radon, this is they were it started there. And then it kind of died there as well. Now, if I go to all homebrews, you maybe wonder why don't you just go to homebrews and go through everything. Well, the problem is you end up with a lot of Noble Dark Imperium, Imperium Asunder, Post-Apocalyptic Roadmap, Warhammer Homebrew, Warhammer Triumvirate. A lot of these end up being variations of 40k 
things or 40k RPGs. So sorting through all of these is its own um, task and a half, which is why I'm only doing a a, a sparse few. If you can get if you can get me catch me. Yeah, War Machine. Remember when War Machine was a thing? I remember. Don't worry, War Machine will totally kill 40k. Yeah, that that happened. But we're gonna go over our four games today. Today we're gonna start off. With Catastrophe. Catastrophe is an interesting project. It's an interesting entity more than anything. Let me zoom in. Because you can argue that the entire game is built around this image. Cat girls on beaches. That's that is a vast majority of Catastrophe. I'm, I'm not going to lie. This is what a majority of the game boils down to. Maybe saying, all right, all right, no, Pat, show us the game. Well, there is no game. <laughs> Pretty much, uh, it never, it never really went far outside a lot of great artwork. Don't get me wrong. We got some great artwork out of it and as you can see here, again, really heavily detailed, really pleasant, really nice. However, for every bit of this, we ended up with technically five systems for it. Uh, <laughs> we also get a lot of what are the Komamimi like? It's a lighthearted or more grim dark systems like 40k. It's always, it's always 40k. <laughs> don't forget, don't forget that. So we have the Arguably the closest thing we have to a actual game, which is Catastrophe, the the Fate version. Now, Fate here, if I, if I look here, when did this actually come out? So, this file got uploaded in 2014. The final compilation, 2014. This is six years old, and it has not seen... That much development since. Well, let's let's go through this again. This is Fate Accelerator. Now, I am not a huge fan of Fate. Also, 2012 is when kind of we're seeing the the earliest here. I am not a big fan of uh, good old yet yeah, uh, a Fate. I'm not a, just a big fan of it in general. So. Let's see if we can't find anything on that damn cat folk. Yeah, we ain't we ain't seeing anything. Yeah, I don't think he he is going anywhere fast. So we also have Graham, artwork the Maestro, various draw friends. And as you can kind of see, there's no names on these and written with LibreOffice. Uh, 4chan TGs, that's the first one. Uh, yeah. So, this is version 1. Unfreeze your damn tail. Alright, let's, let's keep going. As we get... Oh, oh, wow. Basic lore is ice... Ice caps melted. Uh, nothing. We just started pretty much on Catastrophe and me going through this six-year-old document, which is the closest thing we actually have to a plot. This is it, really, for Catastrophe. You know, we'd like to believe I think there's a lot to it because it's been on TG for so long, your toast. But overall, there's not actually that much when it comes to catastrophe in general it's because well there's not much to actually do in catastrophe and you can kind of see where people uh, were initially turned off by this version so it's fate accelerated that's really all i can see some people really like fate accelerated some people really hate fate accelerated
This is 2014. It was six years ago, and mind you, the weird thing is, not even 2014, I think, because if we look at here, Graham here, this is signed from 2012. So, and some of the earliest threads I can find on it, we're looking back to 2013 even. Actually, how far back does this go? 2012. Jesus. Yeah, this is 2012. It's been eight years since anyone made any, since the, this started. I thought it was 2014, but... This is 2012 4chan, drawn by just a handful of budget artists. Did it for free. And it's... Yes, arguably it is Cat has to be supposed to be Slice of Life. Yes, and that's one of the key issues that always kind of presided over Catastrophe in more ways than one, being that the fact that there is nothing to fucking do. And it's a nice setting to kind of sit back and be like, oh, hey, wouldn't it be kind of cool to play Cat Girls on the beach? OMG, Lumau, let's have some quick slice of life anime fun. That's great and all, but there's nothing to do, really, and outside of the usual one is... Uh, people go on adventures to collect shiny things. That's literally what you do. You you go on adventures to do things. Which, there's always a world. There's a, there's a place, I'm taking the... There's a place for games that are light and pleasant and simple. But without really a... kind of a bite into it. It's kind of hard to find a good version of it. And again, it's fey. Normally I would be going over a lot of you know, mechanics and stuff, but it's fate accelerated. That's all this game is. And some people really enjoy fate accelerated. I don't. <laughs> I just find the game pretty damn boring more than anything but it's a free game about people drawing cat girls that's pretty much it i uh unfrizz your tails am i saying a furry got involved in this yes uh let's see 4 25 14 23 7600 uh, yeah, you know, it's, <laughs> here's your Skype. Yup. Yeah, but it's, uh, you, you know, we're getting a little bit desperate when we're looking at the Skypes. So, uh, we also have the beta ver pause, which is the beta version of a D20 based system. Because there are technically five games in Catastrophe, and I do know there is at least one. There's one being worked on, and this was two, two months ago, two, three months ago, that when I started a homebrew thread, it was, you know, someone said, hey, I'm working on this, I think it's going to be interesting, and I'm like, all right, cool, go down, go for it, and I haven't seen anything from that guy since, so he may have stopped working on it, he may just be doing his own thing, I don't know, so there may be a number six somewhere in here, but I don't know, because it's not there anymore. So, this is... Yeah, welcome to uh, the beta version of 20. <laughs> yeah, let's let's make a copy. Uh, yeah, welcome to... This is it. This is... There's nothing here, hardly. Is the media fire still up? Nah, no, media fire ain't up. I had a feeling that was gonna be the case. Uh, yeah, there's nothing here. <laughs> Whatever was here has been deleted. What do you mean, Toast? Of course, I always use public domain music. <laughs> I usually just use background music. I've been debating on using, like, public domain stuff, but it's like, I usually talk over everything, so 
It doesn't really get heard. So here's your catastrophe roll. Jesus Christmas Christ. Yeah, this is based off. When was this? Can I check a year? 2014. This is six years old. Jesus. This is some old stuff. Alright, well, nothing here. Bye. Uh, the maid conversion. Now, maid is kind of what... People like to assume that maid can run anything, and the answer is yes. Yeah, G Bastard Bonds is great. It's a it's a fantastic game. It's it's wonderful, and it's a really fun it's a really fun stupid game that makes you debate the the the, the finer points of your life. Jeez, we got a game jam up and running. Oh wait a second. But yeah, so yeah, it's it's fun. Have fun with it. Don't. <laughs> Don't take it too seriously. But Maid is a game that can run a lot of things. However, Maid also has its problems because it's a weird Japanese game. And uh, to, to give you the idea of how in-depth this is, congratulations, here is the entire Catastrophe Maid conversion. Because you, you, don't, you don't need anything for Maid. Everything runs in Maid. And it kind of is its own problem. It's a, it's a fascinating, isn't it? When you actually think about it, because you get things like made and it's like, oh boy, it's really simple stuff that you don't really need to think about. Um, you know, also here's your character creation. Which is not even done, by the way. Fun fact, this isn't even done. There's like... There are giant chunks of this that aren't even done. Uh, I don't know if this is just... Yeah, there's no discussion page. Uh, what's what's the history of this? Sorry for deafening everyone there. But yeah, this has not been changed since 2013. Okay, let's do Tail and Cat. So Tail is... Okay, tail is literally just this. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing here. Let's check the let's check the history. Uh, 2015, so it's five. Yeah, it's literally five. Oh wow. Yep, it's been five years since anyone touched this. Um, here's cat version one. Which, craftiness, agility, toughness, traits, race, the meat. It's a fairly basic system. A lot, looks like it uses a coin system, even. Uh, when did you come out? 2018, so this is two years ago. This is when the cat system emerged, and that's, and that's all she wrote. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I think one of the issues with this is that it's, it's such a simple idea because you can't really do like a hardcore deathmatch game with this. Because, I, I kind of discussed this before you showed up, but a lot of TG settings, a lot of TG games end up in an ideas guys phase. And by that idea guys phase where it's a whole lot of nothing, to be honest. Well, here's the earliest thread. Where it's a lot of people saying they have a good idea and they want to explore a good idea and let's talk about the ideas we have. But when you realize it's nothing, there's nothing here. And there's not actually that much to really base it off of because there's no mechanic talk there's no it's setting details 
And this is what inspired the setting, these images. And let's see, Google search. Let's see if we can actually find who did these. So, uh, words, words. This is Curious Cases. These are my little look at weird games I find over time. Here, previous ones have been over games like Sigmata or Swordsfall. This one I'm calling TG's Dusty Closet, which is just a bunch of games that find themselves on 4chan's traditional games board and disappear. Or they get mentioned a lot and just phase out of existence. 2016, Konchan, nothing. There's nothing here about this artwork. I can't even find who did original. Is there a name on it somewhere? It's definitely Asian. Definitely Japanese, I can tell you that goddamn much, just judging by the eyes and the way they're doing them. But, nothing much. But we can see kind of the, the latest one. The Catastrophe... The weird thing about this game, more than anything, about the setting, is that it's been getting mentioned. It's been brought up in circles on TG even recently as yesterday, the 25th of December, that it was brought up being asked, like, is there a playable version? Is there a, you know, is there a way I can play this? Because I want to experience this. I want to have fun with it. Because if you look at any of those images, Catastrophe is often the first thing that pops up. And it's also one of the first things that pop up at... Exactly. But here's the weird thing. Yeah, it doesn't pop up often, but... If we go through... These are all of it, just with Catastrophe in the, the, the thread name. And... Every year, roughly about one or two gets made. Usually it's by... Some... Usually it's by, a, it looks like it'd be a draw, drawer, an artist. I, oh, here's some weird thread, little weird, real, little weird thread, little weird threads, little weird threads. It's all throughout the past few years, there's usually like one or two made. Not a lot, but it just constantly gets brought up. Constantly gets re, like, oh, here we go, we're, we're coming back, we're, we're doing it again, we're going to try again, and... The latest thread, this is the first thread, latest thread is them complaining about it, literally, about how it keeps, uh, <laughs> it keeps getting, keeps dying after so many times. Uh, too much, yeah, there's no working version of this game, and I find that interesting. Uh, because, and one of the reasons I wanted to go over this game and just kind of go over the various little versions of it, because the fact that it keeps getting brought up, which is a issue, I wouldn't say an issue necessarily, but a noted thing when it comes to TG is that we, now, TG does not like to give up sold products. There is a nostalgia factor, of course, and there's always, well, TG was better back in the day, or yada yada yada, which arguably it was, but the fact that we keep bringing these things up kind of dissuades people from making new things. We went over Raiders and Ra uh, Radon and Raiders, I believe. Ra 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 Radon and Radon and Raiders and Raiders and Radon, which was supposed to be like British Fallout. That made thread and then that disappeared. And the only thing I could really find on it, just from a quick Google search, was a TV Tropes page, for God's sakes. But it's, it's interesting, the fact that, you know, these exist. Which brings me to my next part. So let's exit out of here. Which is... Night Shift. Now, Night Shift... You know, let's check the history. Uh, Night Shift... Jesus, it was 2014? Good God. I thought it was like, two, like a few years ago. Well, yeah, this is a six-year-old project at this point. Damn. But the, the... The the premise behind Night Shift is uh, players are employees working at Night Shift at a gas station in the lonely side of nowhere. 
drudgery and mundane duties and responsibility with unna uncanny, pre-natural, supernatural, and paranormal events which happen at this particular gas station. Uh, which is to say... <laughs> which, I think one of the issues behind Night Shift is kind of almost like Catastrophe. Really good idea, a lot of interesting writing behind it. There's a lot of meat here and there's something that we can get. However, there's a lot of ideas, guys. And not a lot of people being able to put in the the muscle, effectively, to make this kind of game. And there's nothing wrong with that. Some people make things, some people don't. And some some games deserve mechanics, while others kind of fall, fall, fall by the wayside. So, as usual, we have a few generic systems for it. Probably the largest one is the Apocalypse World versions. The Apocalypse World versions pro are the best to do things by, because it's actually mechanics. And whoever actually did this one, cared, which is a novel concept. You're, you're speaking the you're speaking the you know my you're preaching to the choir there, words. I think a lot of these projects, what happens is you get a lot of people who have a really good idea, and they want a really cool like let's really work on this concept, let's really work on this idea. We can make something out of this. But in any if you've ever worked in a team setting before, you understand that too many cooks in the kitchen usually spoils the food, and you get a lot of people who make ideas, and then you get like one or two guys who are like, oh, I'm gonna write this. Like, oh, I'm gonna be the one to write this. I'm gonna be the one to do this. I'm gonna be the one to... And what happens is sometimes people do. However, they take the game in their direction rather than what the, what the, what the thread wanted. I think the... Uh, the, the most recent example of that I can think of is Witch Doctors and War Crimes. I don't know if anyone remembers those threads, because I know they got banned out of existence. But the initial idea behind it was actually, well, terrible, but it was, well, a collaborative effort. Being like, yeah, let's do this. This is kind of funny. This is like something ridiculous. Ha ha ha, lamau. And nobody really took the effort to really write anything until one guy... Uh, PRP Games, uh, who was run by, I believe, a German, a very stupid German, and I, I can talk about him for a while, but I won't go over him, um, said, like, oh, I'm gonna make it, and then he wrote something completely different from everyone, anyone else wanted, and then the project died, because he was actually a horrifying super racist, and not the funny kind of racist, just kind of the asshole kind. And... All right, all right, okay. We're, we're going to do a little little sidetrack on witch doctors and war crimes. Well, the funny thing behind witch doctors and war crimes is witch doctors and war crimes is in fact, you know, drum roll please, da 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 da, da the precursor to Hearts of Darkness. All of this is because witch doctors and war crimes failed. And the, the main reason behind that was a man named Varric. I believe Varric was his name. I It was V something. And he was a German guy who was the head of PRP games, quote unquote, head of PRP. And his biggest issue that I've real I when I went in there, you know, I'm like, hey, this is kind of this interesting idea. I want to work on something outside because I had just finished Blood Coin and Steel when I got on this. I'm like, let's try my chops out. Let's do this. Uh, and I'm like, cool, let's do it. I, you know, this is going to be fun. This is going to be interesting. And I go in there and they present me the book because they're like, oh, wow, someone who does numbers. I'm like, yeah, I, he, they presented me the book and the book had no stats. There was no organization. Everything was in Courier New uh, because the original PDF of the game, the, there was actually someone who made the game at first. So it was a PDF. Uh, he deleted everything and left. Nobody knew what happened to him. Uh, so it was left to these guys with, like, an old version of the game, and they're like, oh, well, obviously I know what to do, and 
There were things like the intelligence score, where the stupider you were, the more superpowers you got. And it was like, what? Like, okay, what's the advantage of being smarter? Because there was no advantage to being smarter. And in this guy's exact words, like, why would you want to be smart? You're stupid. Uh, the naughty gamer word. Uh, and it was like, Jesus Christ. And like, there wasn't anything there. The game just didn't blatantly didn't work. It was like, oh, well, here's the five subclasses. I'm like, what are the subclasses actually based on? Oh, I don't know. It's just, I, I just want subclasses. And I actually questioned him, like, what all of those guys, what their credentials were. Like, what, have they worked on anything? What games have they played? Let's, let's see what they, you know, they know. The lead guy had played five sessions of D&D 5th Edition and one session of Zweihander. Uh, among the other five, about, there was about 15 guys, uh, 14 of which were idea guys, but there's one other writer. They had about, collectively, about 25 hours of TG behind them. And they were all questers. Every single one of them came from quest, and I was like, oh. Yeah, I know, but it's like, oh, oh. And it was like, okay, this is like a, it was a lot of ideas and not anything there. Like they'd had no enemies uh, except a pack of elephants because obviously you need a pack of elephants and there was no classes. There were, there were a lot of ideas that just weren't present and I'm like, oh, wow. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is awful and I hate everything about this so I rewrote my own so which brought about uh, Hearts of Darkness uh, not Hearts of Darkness which brought about Witch Doctors and War Crimes Dancing in the Glory of Monsters and you can always tell it's my version because it has the face of the Commandant from Beast of No Nation on it it has uh yeah anytime you see this image on on top of good old uh hearts of dark and not hearts of darkness a witch talks and war crimes that's mine <laughs> because that's what i based it off of and i shifted mine away from the blatant racism <laughs> uh and the fact that there was i'm I'm not gonna fuck with anyone here, but there was like a like a deliberate rape mechanic, because that's what the gamer words do, according to the lead developer. You know, it's like, oh no, oh no. Uh, so I rewrote the entire thing to be make it a little bit more about drama and make it a little bit there. And it was funny because at first, every single one of them was like, oh wow, this is really cool, and then immediately all of them were like, this sucks. It's not it's not racist enough. You know, you're, you're supposed to make fun of them, Lamau, white pride, and all that shit. I'm like, um, oh, no, like, you, like, feel free to use it. And I rewrote that game twice for them. I reformatted everything to make it actually playable. So anytime you actually see one of those witch doctors and war crimes with a table of contents, that was me. Uh, eventually, I got kicked from the server because I wasn't racist enough, and the entirety of PRP... Apparently, after I got kicked, it was about a week later, and the entirety of that uh, group collapsed. Everything, everyone just collapsed, and everyone started fighting. And I still occasionally see... Well, the thing is, it wasn't even a commission. This was like, I, I went in there because it was like, hey, there's something actually interesting. And what I saw originally was those initial threads where the first guy made his PDF. It's like I'm in. I'm, I'm, I'm interested. Well, like, because I, I enjoy this kind of hit. I enjoy this kind of thing. There's actually a lot that you can do here, but it was just kind of this roller coaster of shit <laughs> after I got in there. So I rewrote it. I made it my own. And one of the reasons why I changed the name was to differentiate it from Witch Doctors and War Crimes because the the German uh, he decided that he didn't like my game at all. So he rewrote the main document. Uh, which, mind you, he copy-pasted a bunch of stuff of mine in there. Let's not forget that. 
he put it in there and he was just like, uh, this version's stupid and not the, not the correct version to hate and, you know, the gamer, the gamer words, you know, Lamau races, Paul is cool. And it's like, oh no. <laughs> so I changed the name to Hearts of Darkness. And I, I actually put this entire side in here. Like this is like an entire, like big thing on it. Because he kept, he did a lot of stupid shit. Try to get, he was, he, was, he was one of those, you know, Polacks that would appear and disappear. Not someone you really want to deal with. But, uh, that, that's my little side tangent on Witch Doctors and War Crimes. If I can hunt down, I actually, I've, I've seen around, I believe one of them is actually in GDG. At one point, they were in GDG, at least. It went by Dia, uh, Dia Giav. Diogenius. Diogen, Diogen. This guy. He went by this name. And he was in GDG for a bit. And I can't. I I haven't been able to find him since then. So he was in PRP. Oh, yeah, he is here. Unless, unless someone... Yeah, he's still there. Right at the bottom of the list. Uh, yeah, he was in PRP with, with it. But it's... I haven't found... Yeah, I haven't found... He wasn't one of the worst ones. Did he? was was like, it's not racist enough. Yeah, but... Have I, you know, is, have I found the original German? No. The original German disappeared. I think I still have some, like, evidence of, like, yeah, he's kind of fucking weird. But that's all I can really find on him. But let's keep going through Night Shift. And guess what, everyone? Night Shift is, it's just, it's powered by the Apocalypse. If you've played any Powered by the Apocalypse games, congratulations, you have played this. It's fine. I think one of the issues, too, is that he also... This doesn't really change any of the stats. not like a, quote, true Apocalypse World hack, end quote. But... It's nothing wrong. <laughs> Add Noodle here, don't forget. And... Congratulations, you've played Night Shift. You can play Night Shift when you want. And it looks nice. I'll give them that. And it's a nice look. Has everything... Oh, God. Has everything the way it should look. It does have a lot of these uh, placeholder text. Add doodle here. Uh, let's see. Dev note. Rules on changing jobs. Placeholder... <laughs> Yeah. A lot of placeholder text. A lot of... Oh, jeez. A lot of nothing. That's all you can really say about this. It's just like a lot of... Oh, boy. Uh, when did this... Yeah, let's actually check. Details. So, 2018... No, about 2017. Yeah, no, and that's honest. Honestly, like it. And that's why a lot of these projects end up as these not even really complex generic systems, but they end up as like really simple made conversions or fudge or fay or uh, fay accelerated. They end up as these really simple games because it's really easy to hack them out and it's easy to throw something on there and say, well, here you go. Here, here it is. You know, we've got a game, everyone. Look at this. Look at our cool game that we have now. And everyone's like, yay, we have a game. And then, and it's weird too because what happens is that it appears. Everyone's like, yay, we have a game. And then it's, and then it dies. It's like, oh, the work's done. We don't have to worry about it anymore. Someone wrote the game, and then everyone leaves. So it's like, oh, 
Oh no. So yeah, this is about two years old at this point. Uh, let's see, we got a store cl stock clerk. Uh, let's see. Uh, we've got the pump attendant, which... The, you know this is probably written by someone in you know good old fucking or good old fashioned on the west coast because fun fact pump attendants aren't really a thing on the east drifter you also get a lot of the like all the backgrounds look to be the exact same yeah Yeah, yeah, all, all of these are the same. Goals are pretty similar. Assistant manager. Trainee. Yeah, and that kind of is just like, oh, someone, it's done. We no longer have to even think about it. Which leads to a very interesting scenario. And I'll get to it in a minute. Okay, let, let's look at Fiasco. Everyone remember Fiasco? Yeah, Everyone loved Fiasco, and then Fiasco kind of disappeared. Uh, let's see if this loads. Yep. Oh, jeez. Yeah, no, here we... Oh, jeez, yep. Mind you, this is all... Oh, oh, wait, this is all form fillable, too. Huh. When did this pop up? Oh, oh can I even... Can I, I can't even check it, can I? Oh, wow, yeah, no, I can't even check when this came into existence. Ah, uh, let's see. Oh, let's check the fudge version. Is there anything fun and exciting? Nope. <laughs> yeah, um... Yeah, so the fudge variant is gone. Yeah, Apocalypse World works. Fiasco is there. Uh, we can take... Well, let's take a look at Fate version. I mean, it's going to be Fate. You also get a lot of these. Actually, the Fate version looks pretty similar. I mean, it's Fate, for God's sakes. And then look, this is like kind of a neat system, I guess. I mean, you're pretty much having to build the station itself, but at the end of the day, it's... Fate and... Uh, let's see. Compiled resources. Oh, this is going to be good. Oh, wow. Powered by the apocalypse. Yeah, okay. Mostly finished. All the... Yeah, all the events and all that. Yeah, actually, what I can do is... I want to look at the events. So this is arguably what a lot of Night Shift threads devolve into. is here's some interesting bits like here are here i'm going to zoom in mind you my computer does not like this page because there's so many fucking things on it it's like oh an alien invasion but they're after something directly underneath the ga gas station or da -da -da -da, let's scroll down your boss is giving you a budget to spend on restocking the store the merchant the kind of merchandise you choose might affect the visitors you get but some of the items in the catalog are not what you expect to find at a convenience store or it's like, family rides bus to pulled RV. They seem normal enough at first, but there's a progresses beyond them finishing each other's sentences into total synchronization. A happy family is a normal family. A happy family is a normal family. <laughs> it's, you end up with, let's see, how, how many are there? There's 100 and, 104, technically. Let's, let's see in the second list. So we've got... She led nightly duties, structural anomaly patron table. Like, there's a lot of tables here overall, and I think that's pretty neat, but it looks like again, somebody. <laughs> yeah, damn straight. You don't know D88s. 
but it's you end up also with a lot of these like empty charts that like we didn't think about but don't worry we have the snack table it goes up to 11 out of 20 and it's like some of them just don't work like obviously this was made by a lot of people like a bunch of people took place took part in this which uh, if any of you have ever worked with google docs with multiple people working on them you realize that it is the second worst thing ever created ever because everyone has a slightly different idea and some people are assholes and like changing things uh, so yeah here's all of your various no and this is what the threads devolve into and if we uh, looked here in the archive threads. So the la last thread was back in the 23rd of September of this year. So, but if we go all the way back, oh, we're going back, back in time. Uh, we have a, a thread two. Uh, let's see, and let's see what the, mo what the most recent threads like. Yep, it's. <laughs> Don't worry about it, so. I love Night Vale. Yeah, Night Shift. Uh, for my Night Shift Google Drive. Alright, alright. All right, look, and the weird thing is, like, people are still making stuff for this, which is kind of odd. All right, let's... Oh, Jesus, Christmas Christ. Yeah, so this is the main guy, I think, or at least he's the one compiling everything. Or at least he's compiled everything. So we've got management guide, employee manuals... Uh, midnight shift. Midnight shift. What the hell's this? This, which is a completely different game, I guess. This is just a GIF. Oh. I think the weird thing with night shift at the end of the day is that there was a lot of. A lot of heart that went into it because obviously some people enjoyed it and, and the fact that there's again like four or five versions of this game that technically all work but it's a lot of very light games because it's easy to make and everyone it's one of those odd things where everybody wants to run a night shift game everybody wants to run a catastrophe game everyone wants to but actually doing it that's hard because um, because if you pitch it to someone, it's actually pretty interesting. Like, oh yeah, here's a gas station in the middle of nowhere, except it's all haunted by weird shit, and there's ghosts and aliens and monsters. Look at it. Oh, here's all all these things. But again, it's one of those things. Like, if you can pitch it, people get interested in. It. Like, oh wow, that seems pretty interesting. And then you realize they're actually running this game. Uh, no, no one wants to actually run it <laughs> because it's a whole lot of doing nothing. It's a whole lot of doing. Exactly. They want to talk about the cool idea, but the second someone's like, yeah, let's run it. No one wants to. <laughs> no, nobody, nobody ever wants to run the cool idea because running the cool idea ruins it. You know, it's always a it's always an interesting idea to want to go in the restaurant, the really nice fancy restaurant. But you also don't want to go in there because you'll ruin it. Because it's not going to be what you think. You want to do right. Oh, you really do. And it might be great, but you also have that risk of it being terrible. And you don't want to ruin the illusion of it. And I think that's what this is. I think don't people do not want to lose the illusion of night shift. Of this unplayable, beautiful game that's perfect. And I think that's why we see so many of those threads that are like, oh, let's talk about a, a fictional game that doesn't exist. I think people don't want to lose the illusion of this beautiful game that they've come up with in their heads. Because if the second you do that, you ruin it forever. You ruin it. It's gone. 
you want to enjoy it you want it to be there but sometimes it disappears and that sucks so i want to check something All right, so that's that's Night Shift. Very simple game, but simple games also lend themselves to fascinating ones, which is kind of a, a TG commonality, you could say, of here's some cool idea, and let's... Uh... And then before we depart and we go to our next two, our two big ones, our two big shows this time... I kind of want to just look over some of these and just give you the idea of what it means to be a, a, a TG shit poster when it comes to weird ideas. Things like heathen, heathens in a heathen western, which, oh wow, look at all these crazy ideas. I'm like, oh, let's take a look at this. Oh. Oh, here's, it's a really simple game. Then there's like no skills, nothing here. Oh, yeah, of course, damage is based on the caliber. Does anyone actually want to do this? No. This came out in 2018. Last page was last edited on 2018. When was this? When was it made? That's what, that's what you can always check. Uh, cursed toy. So this came out in 2014. So six years, six years old. Uh... I remember this one. I might have to do. But it's like, oh, here's some cool ideas. And it's like, oh, don't worry, we're making it in fudge, everyone. And when did when did this come out? Oh, 404 not found. You know that's a good sign. Yeah, here's here's literally everything. This came out, Jesus, 2008. This is 12 ID 12 years old. Ah, those were simpler times. Uh, let's see what some other ones that we can we we can find. Because so obviously, there has to be other like really cool ones, right? And then you realize ninety five percent of these are fucking forty k ones. It's like, oh god, why is it always forty k? You get some interesting. It, it's. I think that's kind of the, the the summary of TG games almost. Wow, this is a really cool idea. No one wants to do it though. No one wants to touch it. But uh, let, let's 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 stop with games that are kind of stuck. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think the I think one of the main issues with a lot of TG games is that they get stuck and they don't go anywhere. Or people get bored. That's another thing that happens. People get bored. I mean, like, uh, we, we want the next cool thing to hop on to. Or we want the thing after the next cool thing to hop on to. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's just common sense. Especially when you get to like, oh, here's 18 threads of something. It's like, oh, well, I'm not interested anymore. But today we're going to look at two two games. We're going to start with the, uh, the not professional professional looking one. This is Disney Villains Victorious. And I should not have closed out of 1D4chan because we need to look at, drumroll please, uh, Disney Villains Victorious. So Disney Villains Victorious. So, good old Disney Villains Victorious is a game with one very simple idea. All the villains in Disney won. And this came out 2015. Damn. Jesus. I didn't know. Oh, wow. No, 2014. Yeah, 2014 is when it started. God, I thought this was way younger. Yeah, all right. I thought these were way younger. But Disney Villains Victorious. As its 
basic idea of all the villains in Disney across all the all the series one they're they're, they're the victors so uh yeah here's all of your various land masses that are uh we have oh god oh no that's that's terrible okay uh let, let's look at your black okay uh satan owns finland i think uh lands of the bear okay scotland uh okay so it looks like uh the entirety of, so the blue uh, uh oh god yeah uh yeah there's no there's no color coordination yeah i always knew finland would be would be taken immediately by satan so uh let's see yeah, you also get like, okay, it's like Pleasure Island from Pinocchio. It's pink. Uh, where, where's, where's Pinocchio? Oh, it's Venice. He's just taking over Venice. All right, all right, cool. Uh, let's see, green the Feylands, Maleficent. All right, Sleeping Beauty. Uh, let's see. The Sultanate of Agrabah. Ah, yes, proud European ancestry, as you can see here. Pure European. <laughs> yeah, uh... Wait, no, that's not Finland. Finland's brown. Well, let's look at that dark brown. Rust colored? What the fuck is rust colored? These are really hard to read, but you you get all of these. Yeah, it, it, this is this is Russia. This is half of Russia. Is the the, uh, the kingdom of the cauldron of the black cauldron? Uh, Oh yeah, Archdiocese, Pontificus, Immortalis, Claude Frollo, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, is uh, yellow. So, all of this is technically Super Rome. Alright, what's wait, what's pink? A purple mirror kingdoms. Oh, it appears the Germans have become evil again. Oh no, not again. But all of these are classic... Wait, what's in Japan? Yeah, wait a second. Why is Japan? Why is there seven Japans? Tell me. Disney, Disney villains victorious. Why is there seven Japans? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's six Japans. That's not how that works. Yeah, it's. One of the the things to know with Disney Villains Victorious is very simply is that all of the enemies are Disney Villains. And if that doesn't quite make sense to you in some weird way, such as the fact that technically El Dorado is in here. Uh, because even though Del, Del Torado should not be in here, but we don't talk about that. Or, uh, where is it? Uh, let's see. Where, where, where's that? Where's my favorite one? That makes absolutely no goddamn sense. Oh, light blue. Yeah, all of Nor- All of Scandinavia outside being next to Satan land is, uh, entirely ruled by Elsa and apparently is frozen over because Elsa's evil. Yeah, effectively, it's like, okay, Japan's just non-existent. Fuck Japan. Uh, also, the Mongols took over everyone. It's There's some historical issues with it, but we're not going to talk about historical issues or the fact that, like, why is Africa so... Oh, yeah, I forgot. There are there are no humans in Africa. I How, how could I forget such a... Wait... 
Why is Madagascar Duck? Okay, you know what? No, no, Pad, no, stop it. Stop it right now, no, Pad. You're going to have a stroke if you keep looking at this map. But yeah, welcome to Disney Villains Victorious. It's pretty freaking huge. And there's a lot of Disney villains out there. Which, initially, I was like, oh, wow. This is going to be a, a painful experience. Oh, wait a second. I also had what, the fucking rule book up the entire time. I'm a dumbass. You can apologize. Yeah, apologies. It's... But... <laughs> It's like, oh boy. And, and, and the thing is about this is one thing I actually do enjoy is that they do they are proudly TG. I know a few games out there have evolved from TG and have uh, dropped that shit, yo. <laughs> uh, which I don't blame them for dropping the 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 TG and 4chan world. I don't blame them. 4chan does have a, a, sp a specific reputation. Yeah, here's a, a better version of the map of being shared among everyone. Uh, which is its own awfulness. Uh, so, our kings of evil. We have our sorcerer kings, uh, human kings, god kings, beast kings. Oh, here. Now, I always like looking at the mechanics. And the mechanics are actually functional it's a 3d at, at the end of the day it's a 3d6 system fairly basic i've written a dozen of them they're great because they work for just about everything oh well can't forget the spirit lords uh where are the spirit lords oh uh, yeah uh Hades, ursula chernabog uh the spirit just the entire spirit realm oogie boogie of oogie town master gracie taka of the islands of ash taka And uh, it's a 3d6 plus attribute plus skill. Ta-da! Congratulations. I've summed up the entire system for you. Our attributes are fairly basic. The cool parts are Will. Because Will is effectively your bennies. I'm normally not a huge fan of bennies, but... Honestly, it's not terrible. Because it's you, you don't... You will always get your spirit lords toast. You will, they will always be. They'll always be there. Three will points. Plus three bonus roll. Reroll a roll. Uh, stop being affected by magic. Add details or minor changes to the scene. It's Benny's. Each morning species. Human, human player characters can never go lower than six. And taller than twelve in attributes. Unless they move up a tier. And then you can just choose to be a, a beast. You can choose to be a dog if you want to. Our basic role. Oh god, I see a Doom reference in here. Oh sweet Christ. Uh fun fact, it's strong guy, agile guy, smart guy, sensible guy, charming guy. Congratulations, you've summed up the entirety of it. Huzzah, we've done it. I'm gonna drink myself to a fucking coma. Ugh. Yeah, we can choose to be a lot of things, Toast. Uh, basic skills, untrained skills, goes up the... Uh, the first time you put a point in the skill, skills up goes up with, up to three? That's kind of weird. Uh, only first only goes up by one, so zero to three. Yeah, that's really weird. That's a really weird note. No, why don't... Okay. No, 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 Pat, don't look. Don't think. Uh, ten points... So, academics, again, oh god, they're gonna go over. Oh, but not everything. <laughs> oh no. You didn't, you, someone forgot to put that there. Ledger. Ledger main. <laughs> oh no, they're doing the thing I hate. So, one thing that I have a special hatred for is, like, things inside of skills. I mean, if you roll reaches target number 20, you grant everyone in your party plus 3 bonus to that skill, or to every attack the group makes. For every 5 points over TN20, this bonus increases by 1. I dislike this. 
because it gives more weight to certain at more certain skills over than others and you want every skill to feel impactful for for a good reason it's just like oh yeah well obviously you want to someone has to pump music so you get all these little bonuses and because i know it's a disney but at that point if you can break into a musical number i mean that i i uh, god i hope there is a musical number i can prevent harm i got you okay Doof. And then we have traits. Traits are traits. One, two, three. Uh, which are really basic things. It's like, oh boy. Three traits. Here, let's take a look at list of the sample traits. Yes, I want to look at the sample traits. Uh, so here's our, our sample traits. Uh, all will be well. Plus two when trying to calm down. Among mad people, plus two. Bamboo, plus three. Been around the block. It's literally just bonus points. Yeah, that's that's literally all it is. Wait, there is musical number mechanics. Oh god, I gotta find those. Those sound awful. <laughs> what, you can't burst into a musical number rule? Come on, that's half the fun of Disney, of breaking into breaking into song randomly. So, yeah, welcome to... These end up being, like, fairly basic. Plus two here, minus one there, plus two, plus two there, plus four. And plus two in general situation, plus four in drought situation. That's what it boils down to. It's, and I actually went on to the Disney Villains Victorious Discord. There, there's Discord. And it's a big boy, like 400 plus people in there. And there, it was actually, they were pretty welcoming. They were actually really welcoming. And they were pretty cool, cool people. And they explained kind of what the situation was. I'm like, oh, this is pretty interesting. Uh, the main reason it's that big was because they ran a quest on sufficient velocity. About being Professor Doofenshmirtz from Phineas and Ferb. They ran a dramatic quest about being Professor Doofenshmirtz from fucking Phineas and Ferb. And apparently everyone was like, this is my shit. And everyone decided to join in. And the entire time they, like, of the few games I, I was, people were telling me about, it was, the, the rules work, is from what I've gathered. Like, the rules work well enough. Uh... Exclusive. Oh, Jesus. I hate this. I dislike this. I'm charging the odds at a certain death. Yeah, I, I hate... Anytime it's like, oh, hey, let's do a... And certain death. Well, it's not certain death. It's certain death to you, but not, not the GM. And so you don't get your bonus. I always hate things when you always have to rely on the GM for kind of falling in with what you're thinking but uh, they don't need to be big right you know, it's just two examples I do get into trouble get glory then we got goals And then we got our experience system. More lessons equals more things you can get. They do actually really like this part. They actually have a progression rate system where you can choose like how fast or slow you want things to go, which I really like. Which more people should do. Because some times people can't do 
you know, huge major games that take five years to complete. Sometimes people get five sessions. Uh, various tiers. Uh... Yeah, you call them casuals, I call them my my only group. It's... <laughs> Now, I think they're, I, I, honestly, I think some games are kind of, like, demanding that you have a big, like, long campaigns. <laughs> some some games just lend themselves to long campaigns. Like, Exalted games. Those, I expect those games to take a long time because it's Exalted. It's big, it's exciting, it's flashy, blah, blah, blah. But there are some games out there that I'm like, hmm, you want me to do, you want me to commit to this game for how long? Like, Apocalypse World? Apocalypse World should never last more than, like, a couple sessions. I am a firm believer in that. Uh, let's see. So, complete goals, become better, become more of a hero. Equipment. Oh, God, oh God. equipment doesn't do anything. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, looks like it just augments your skills. That's kind of a weird way. Okay. Yeah, it looks like gun looks like weapons don't actually do anything. They just increase your skills, which not really my favorite thing in the world, but I've also <laughs> <laughs> the big brain plays, yeah. My my personal philosophy is that if you're putting equipment and stuff in your game, make it detailed enough that it actually affects something, but make it, you know, reasonable enough. Like having, like... I'm not gonna say... I'm not gonna point at anyone, but I think you may all know. Having 9 million guns in a game where you probably players are gonna end up finding about 2 or 3, not really appropriate. <laughs> But it was just like, like in um, Hearts of Darkness, I ended up having like a huge amount of guns just because I felt it was important and I needed these various guns or uh, Hearts of Valkyria. <laughs> Damn straight. I must personally attack everyone, don't you know? But... Overall, my 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 philosophy. But overall, like I've seen some games with these huge, massive equipment lists. I'm like, you don't need these. Like, when am I ever going to use this incredibly specific, like high level gear? When I just like, when you don't even tell me what a goddamn dagger does. Or do you end up in the other situation, which I have a personal fucking hatred for? <gasps> Where it's just like, oh, just wishy-washy, it's all, nothing makes sense. Like, oh, oh, God, what was that game we looked at? Oh, Sigmata. Sigmata was incredibly amusing, where by technicality, a, a, a gun, <laughs> a, a handgun does the exact same thing as a truncheon, just because of the abstraction level of the rules. <laughs> it was like, oh, no. Or like how a giant fuck off particle cannon does literally nothing. It's great. It's it's absolutely perfect. Normally I look at uh Normally I look at kind of any project that comes across again. I looked at Sigmata uh, last week. Yeah, last week. Uh, Sigmata, this signal. No, I looked at Swords Fall last week, which was a game that doesn't exist, uh, which I don't still think will, does not exist and will not exist. And I think it's a media project more than anything. Uh, I looked at Sigmata, the signal kills fascists and its sequel expansion that you have to pay money for the week before. Before that, I looked at hashtag feminism, 
uh, which by Pelgrin Press of all fucking people, uh, which uh, caused me to drink. Thanks, Toast. Thanks, big thanks. This one was kind of like, you know what, let's do something fun. Let's do a Boxing Day stream. I've been wanting to look at some of these games anyway. Well, let's see. Oh, books. <laughs> Uh, other things, genie rings, character creation, three will points, enemies. Fairly basic when it comes to things. I know you did. Uh, Kings and God. Oh, and mind you, they also have like this entire section on. Because this isn't everything. Oh no! Oh no! No no! You you think this is that simple to end right there? Oh no, my dear friend, that's not how this works. Absolutely not. Oh, here's only the core documents. Oh, let's look at all the expansions. Oh wow! Look at all. <laughs> look at all these expansion books. <laughs> look at all these space books. <laughs> Here's all the drums of war. There's the war game one. Here's all the Cartoon Network ones. Like. <laughs> Whoever wrote these. Went ham. Like they. They went absolutely ham on the expansion of these things because this is 70 pages how how many words is this this is 23,000 words uh here's 2.0 oh god you know this is a uh, relatively new so this is like the actual book book various oh god Kings and villains. All right, let's again. We got the version one rules. Our list of things. Oh, our, our we can't forget our mechanic summary of everything here. Yeah, no, it's. I just find it funny, because this game, I honestly thought it died. I thought it was a corpse. And when I went when I went looking, I thought I was going to find a a corpse game. I thought I was going to find a dead Discord, a bunch of broken links, nothing. But there's more now, mind you. This this right here, I love this. Not my kind of game, but I love this. I love it because it's heart. Because people took time and took people took effort. Is it a lot of lore? Is it a lot of writing about stuff? Yeah. Is it actually a fairly mechanically light game? Yeah, and that's what I care about. I care about the mechanics. Uh, I Because my philosophy is all the cool lore and world building and all that stuff means literally goddamn nothing. Means nothing. And because at the end of the day, I can change it. He can change it. You can change it. Anyone can change the lore to fit whatever the hell game they want to play. But the mechanics, that's where things get a little bit complicated to change. If your mechanics aren't good, if your mechanics aren't solid, I usually don't like it as much. However, this game is perfectly serviceable. There's just a lot of it. <laughs> that's why I thought it was so interesting behind this game, why I wanted to look at it. Because it wasn't... I wasn't a corpse. I was expecting a body. But the fact that it was a Doofenshmirtz quest on fucking sufficient velocity that bumped them up and made them go fucking Super Saiyan. Ben, I love that. I think that's fascinating. And I, I, I generally appreciate it. I appreciate I love games like this. I just find it amusing because you get so goddamn many of them. And obviously people care about it. Which is fascinating in its own way. I could go through every single one of these, and I know they were they were talking about on the Discord when I arrived, uh, adapting, God, what was it, some more like DreamWorks properties? That's what they wanted to do, and one of the things that kind of, you know, like, oh, because the, the mechanics are done. 
what I just went over, that's the mechanics. That's it. Well, the rest of it is space versions, and here's some more space stats, and here's the here's the map of space. Of uh, here's space stuff, the one face space stuff things. Do you, do you like space? We got space. You also, this is two years old. Fun fact. Ah, uh, let's see what other let's see what other stuff I can find. Oh, this is my. No, be gone. Ah, uh, let's see. This is actually the most recent map. <laughs> we also got storylines because yeah, people have been running games in this like a lot of games. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. It's yeah, again, it's a perfectly fine game. It's just like, oh, I'm curious. I'm I'm curious because games like this, how big this got, these things fall apart so quickly. Because, and that's why I always tell people in like any of the homebrew threads, which is, take your time, don't burn yourself out because that's how projects die. It is because you burn out on them, you don't want to touch them, and then two years later you accidentally find them again. Like, oh, it's gone. It's no, like it's. But yeah, no, DVV has expanded significantly over the years. Again, it's been six years running, and it's still good, still pumping along. Uh, let's see what I can find. Uh, this is in the art, lore, songs, and stories. Oh, here's the rumor mill. Yeah, Aladdin's fucking dead. <laughs> yeah, uh... Yeah, we also... Oh, yeah, Area Dead. Aristocrat's dead. Ugh. Let's see, let's see what other weird things... Oh yeah, Bell Gaston, Stepford, Baby Mama, Waifu. <laughs> oh, the, the British Queen dead. Can I zoom in? No, I can't. I literally cannot zoom in. Yeah, there's... Like, uh, people obviously, uh, quite involved in this. Because there's 24 fucking pages of just rumor mills of, like, oh, what happened? What, what's going on here? What's, what, what happened, what happened here? What's going on with this? And, oh, all the songs. There's a song section, everybody. Do you want to build a snowman? Sounds like something she would say. It's only speculation because I've never met old Anna anyway. Used to be best buddies, and but now she's dead. I wish she would just cheer up. Do you want to build a snowman? I really hope it's not like Snow Limb. Elsa's not responsive. Snow Anna. Okay, fine. Snow Anna, do you want to build a snowman? Those Atlantean sound nice. I think some company is overdue. I've started talking to the bodies in the ice. Hang in there. <laughs> it gets a little lonely with only three people. And this dumb broken clock. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, crash knocking. Elsa, please, I know you're in there. The world is asking where you've been. They say you're a monster. It's not true. I'm right here. I'm right out here for you. Just let me in. We only have each other. Plus Olaf too. What are you gonna do? Do you wanna build a snowman? Oh god, we got Oh, oh, let's, let's, let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. 
They thought my my death would end this, but it's just begun. I know you're mad, scared, and upset, but when you can bet before we're through, somehow I'll free a land from from Sean Yu. Uh, tranquil are the grave sites, but there lie within a thousand th a thousand thousand soldiers that will help us win. Be not afraid of what it takes, because together we'll make it through. Somehow I'll free our land from Sean Yu. Yeah, no, it's, they they wrote full fucking songs. <laughs> Yeah, there are full songs here. Why are there full songs for this fucking game? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I mean, mind you, I have the singing voice of a dying cat, so... there, There's... <laughs> a lot. Let's look at the art gallery. Uh, okay. Why does that remind me of, um... It reminds me of the N-Town RPG. Anyone remember N-Town? Anyone read that comic back in the day? I loved it. Atlantean soldiers. That's just a- that's just a gun. <laughs> Okay, fun fact, someone really liked Atlantis. Oh, that's High Frollo. That's, oh, that's, that's Milo. Oh, yeah, someone really liked it, like Atlantis, and I do not blame them. Uh, oh. Oh. Uh. Uh, can I can I show the one on the right on the left? No, Atlantis was the he was the one that had uh, where well, they went to Atlantis and got attacked on the giant awesome submarine that was awesome and it was criminally un underrated. I know which one you're talking about. That's Doctor Facilier. I think this is what this guy is based off of. Uh, we also what what is this? What is this persona? Is that a burn monkey? Asked what is this? Also, I don't think you, you I don't think we can legally show this in 20, 2020. Uh, that's that's kind of a no no. In oh hi hi Ursula how you doing? That looks pretty neat. <laughs> Why does this exist? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that's like shine on, I guess. Like, oh wow, there's more. Uh, DTP. Uh, see, this is what I kind of remember. I remember this. I don't know why I remember. Yeah, I, I I distinctly remember this artwork. And is that a fucking Keyblade? Bitch, you can't draw a Keyblade. You're gonna get sued by the Japanese. I'm like, all right, I'm like, I remember this artwork and the threads back in the day. God, how long has it been since I've seen this? 2014 is when this came out. Jesus. Yeah, that's what they were saying. Oh, uh, back in the, actually the Discord, is I was like, oh wow, Rourke's cool. Everyone liked Rourke. Everyone's like, yay, Art Rourke. Uh, but he's still like, yeah, he's still an asshole because he committed genocide. I'm like, oh no, genocide. Why is home on the range here? Yeah, here's your... You can display a fucking dinosaur. Yeah, someone really liked Atlantis. Someone really likes Atlantis. There's a lot of Atlantis artwork. I mean, not. Wait, this is a gift. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh wait, all right, cool. Okay, you know what? Let's. Yeah, I know this is Disney villains victorious, and it's. I like it. 
I think that's one of the things that that's I can best summarize my opinion. Atlantis is pretty fucking cool. Uh It's I and I, I appreciate this a game for a variety of reasons, but I think like the main reason is that because they cared. Because they kept making stuff, the fact that they've been pumping on for 20, you know, not 20 years, they've been pumping on for the past six years. And it's actually a fairly, uh, fairly active Discord as well. You can find the Discord if you look around. If you go on your 1d4 page, you can find them in there. But... You get a lot of people who are like, man, I love Doof Quest, because Doof Quest's a thing. But, yeah, no, oh, what the fuck kind of inflation porn shit are you watching? Okay, you know what? No, no, no. Oh, pad, don't look at it. Don't look at the bad things in life. But uh, we're going to go on our final project, which is actually another TG project. A little bit, a little bit of an off-kilter one. Now, we showed it earlier, which is Nier Agaku. Now, I don't know if any of you have played Nier Automata, but you've probably at least heard of it. Nier Agaku was, well, a game based on it, which is a little bit weird. Uh, I like this game, but I learned who the fuck this person is. E-L-H. Uh, E-L-H <laughs> um, is apparently a streamer. That's what I, I, I've learned. They are a streamer. And they do streaming stuff a lot. And it's mostly like video games and stuff like that as a VTuber. Uh, I wonder if I can find, pull up a picture of them. ELH stream. Yeah, alright. Uh. Here's here here they are. That's that's them. <laughs> this is now mind you before you ask, this is a this this is distinctly a dude. Like just just remember that. This is a this is a dude. <laughs> but they are the ones who actually did. Not who did this game. Near near Gaku. And it's actually a Pretty professional looking book compared to what it kind of could have been. And it's using a derivative of where is it? Uh oh. Because the system we're using is pants, the original pants system. Pants uh tabletop RPG. Let's see if I can find Yeah, I can't find... Why do people name their games like this? <laughs> but, yeah, it's based off this pants system by Tanithika, which, um... No, I have no idea what it is. I've never seen anything off of it. If anyone has any idea of what the pants system is like, feel free to send it my way. I encourage you. But, yeah, this was updated. This is version 0.2. And this was came out in 2020, about six months ago. I remember when this game came out. I was a little bit interested in it, because I like Nier Automata. I think it's a really cool setting. And, uh... Let's just say they, they dive pretty deep into it. They go full full 100%, 110% on this stuff. And I'm not going to go over everything, because there are some spoilery bits, and I do not know if you guys have done that. And I know my friend may may or may not watch this later, and he has not, so I don't want to go over too many spoilery bits. But we have also the, you know, what is a role-playing game, which... I don't know if I'm a bad person, I never put what is a role-playing game in any of my games, because my philosophy is, if you found these games, you probably already know what the hell you're looking for. Hi, phone, what do you need? Let's let's look everyone. Let's let's look what I, I got text message. Oh. It's my my mother. 
watching the Kentucky Fried Chicken special. Because this is the world we live in, kids, where KFC has a, a Lifetime movie. And, um... I'm I'm going to kill myself at this point, I guess. Like, we, we've clearly passed the point of no return, and at this point, it's... Life makes no... No, no, there's no purpose. Abandon all hope you enter here. So, one thing I do enjoy is that they do add everything. Yes, I've actually played the dating sim toast. Uh, it's pretty awful. <laughs> but it was also the kind of thing that you have to play just to make sure that, you know, you have reaffirmed the fact that, you know, God is dead. If, if you ever need, like, concise evidence that there is no higher power, just show them the KFC dating game and just be like, yes, we've done it. But one thing I actually do enjoy about this game is that you get to see everything about the Your How I Androids, which in-game we really only see the A, we see B, and we see S. We don't really see the... The others nearly as much. We see a little bit of executors, but uh, no. We don't even see healers or anything like that. The main reason behind that, because well, they're not the main point. They're not the. They're not something that we want to deal with. Which is fine. Now, one thing about pants, quote unquote, is I like the system. I like the idea behind the system. I think it's a little bit chunky. Though I would probably, instead of D12s, use D10s, but that's just me. But the idea is action styles or numbers of points represent the android. Actually, what I should say, uh. Yeah. Android's capability in the field. Actions are used to determine how many dice to roll, while styles determine what the target number to roll under or equal to it. D10s are easier to read. D12s have that little extra two point range that make things a little bit more complicated. It just adds more numbers. I'm also a fan of D10s, because you can do a lot more with them than with just D12s. Because uh, nothing says, just make me a percentage chance. You got a 50-50, just roll. Just like... Again, that's just me being weird. Like, D12s are just awkward dice. Like, it makes sense in this, in this game, though. But, are your... D100 rolls. You got a 75% chance to roll your dice. That's really it. That indeed intends us nice. I'm weird, okay? But you have your six basic actions. Attack, defend, move, talk, study, tinker. And it's pretty obvious what each does. But you also have six styles. Skillfully, quickly, powerfully, quietly, strategically, and methodically. Which you pretty much, you roll the number of action dice and you try to get under the number of your skill, of your style dice. So, for example, I want to do some, I want to attack quietly. Boom, boom. I want to study skillfully. Boom, boom. This does have some odd ones that take some mental gymnastics to get across. Uh, but it, it works for what it is. Like, I don't know how you can defend quietly or, <laughs> or talk power, like talking powerfully. I kind of get it, but it's like, what do you, okay, maybe I just want to like talk. <laughs> but, uh, other, we also have corruption health because there's a corruption system in this game and it is bad. It is nasty. We do not like corruption. Corruption bad. Corruption make you go insane and hurt people. Uh, but you're a good robot. You you are a good android. Don't do bad android things. But it's also an incredibly simplistic game. It's all right. Um, attack. Spend one health to gain plus two d ten two d twelve to all attack. Defend move tasks with remainder of the scene. One d twelve to all attack tasks. One d twelve to all defend tasks. You can also see whose wife who is here. Tinker tasks. Like, it's a very simplistic game, but I actually like that about it. Is that it gets across what it needs to do and nothing else. Uh, there is an entire section about genitalia and why they're all women. No, I don't know why it's there. There needs to be no reason, but here we are. Don't worry.
Notice the pod. Uh, let's see, upgrading our pair characters. The A pan Android pool and number target system. A pans. So pretty much, you roll number D12 is equal to your type of action you wish you wish to perform, i.e. the verb, and then compare it to each result its chosen style, the adverb. For every die that comes up equal to or lower than your style, you score one success. Our number of successes that is then compared against the difficulty set by the game master. The game master should tell you what difficulty is prior to the roll. By default, all checks have a difficulty of one. It's a dice pool system. And I like dice pool systems. They're not my preferred brand of things because dice pools have a lot of tricks you can pull with them. And sometimes the dice pool can get very large very quickly. And large dice pools are kind of a pain in the ass to read. Especially if there's like a lot of like, oh, well... 10s, uh, 8, 9, 10s are successes, but 10s explode, or, and then it's like, oh, I have 30, I have 13 dice I have to manage and stuff. Some people are okay with it, but when you're on the table doing it, it sometimes takes a little while, and I always like to account for the table. But things work looking pretty all right to me. Critical, two of my stuff, one. Critical success. Oh, we... Uh... Ooh, we have messy criticals. That's nice. More ice rolls. 12, no success. Poop. There is there is one other game by this person. Uh, God, what is it? It's called a mate. M-A-T-E. Wait, this is Mermaids After the End guy? It's this dude. I fucking know this dude. I knew that art style. I knew this guy sounded familiar. I knew it looked right. I knew I was doing something right. Okay, you know, we're going to look at mate after this because I actually was there during me. We're going to go we're going to finish a gaku though. But as you can kind of see, we have the, you know, how everything kind of counters each other, which is okay. We got met our meta currencies. Meta currency is meta currency. Still not a huge fan of it, but that's what we work with. So, wait a second. Yeah, large sword, light, light sword, large sword, spear, combat, bracer, firearm. Okay. The pods and you. Oh, yeah. We also have all our... Ver There's a lot of... Bits and pieces to upgrade and fix and mold things to this game, which I actually enjoy. Because I like it when games give me options. Because ultimately, that's what I like doing. I like playing around and, you know, trying to make something that actually does what I want to do. I want to really mold my character to do exactly the specifics. Which, which here allows me to, which I enjoy. Is it flawless? Ah, uh, no. But what is I think at the end of the day this game kind of suffers from this having being tied more to the uh your being tied to uh automata and the thing is you need to play automata to kind of understand parts of this game uh because there are pretty much to, to give you guys the example go scroll all the way up here and go to our uh everything like seven to eight all of this is Game Master exclusive, which doesn't seem like a lot, but this is also where you get a lot of cool little rules and little stuff like that. Like, if you had never played near near uh, Automata, you can't play this game. Even if you don't really know anything about near Automata, you still can't play this game because there's a lot of little bits and pieces that you wouldn't understand. But the players can't play near Automata because then they know the secret. They they know the twist. Which is like, mm. you do limit the amount of people who can like, I would say enjoy this game. Nothing wrong with that. Sometimes, you know, it's good to, also when you're basing it off an existing franchise, sometimes having a game that kind of the, haha, you know, the, I got you, is good. It works. But uh, welcome to, yep, this is Niragaku. You can actually find, they actually have an itch.io page for this you can find on uh, any updates for and what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to close this out. I'm going to bring up the itch page. Uh... 
Uh, here is the Niragaku page. All with all the, the, the nice little things on there to, you know, pat everyone on the head. Let's see if they have, oh yeah, they have also the game we're going to look at now, which was completely unintended, but here we are. Oh, God. Okay, this is going to get complicated fast. Wait, it has its own Kickstarter. I forgot this. Let's take a look. Did it make its money? It did. Uh, it made its money. Oh, wow. Yeah, I remember this little secret. Uh, two things about this game, actually. Uh, he actually posted this in Monster Girl the World Building. That terrible thread on TG. <laughs> that terrible, awful thread. Uh, I, I like it, but it's... it's uh... Yeah, this is the full release of the game. You can actually just buy, but you have a Kickstarter to that. Oh, you have a 2.0. So this came out... 2.0 came out beginning of the year. So is this the... Okay, this is 2.0. Yeah, you can see here. So this is actually a bit thicker. And, um... Oh, let's play a game. How much does he make on Patreon? Yes, I'm 18 years or older, I swear. I don't know if my viewers are, but I definitely am. He makes $32 a month with an average of $3. Cyberpunk Red... Yeah, it looks like a lot of... looks like he's a tabletop role-playing guy. Uh, which just furthers my assumption that you need to be... <laughs> Everybody, let's point and laugh at words saying that I make money on Patreon. I don't even have a Patreon. I make no money from this. Though this year I do plan on uh, expanding my, my horizons a bit. But if we go to... Click that, click that. I'm gonna get that. Get that. Now, I, I usually like checking of if people make money off Patreon, Patreons and stuff like that, because you end up finding sometimes a little bit weird, uh, in the, uh, weird things popping up. A lot of numbers that somehow get a little bit misappropriated, let's just say that. Uh, such as the case with Swords Fall, which he launched two Kickstarters, mind you, made way over his amount. But he also has full store available that you can buy all the shit, as well as a Patreon, as well as a website-based tier system that you can he makes a lot of money off of. Which... Uh, my usual things when I, like, look at a Patreon is tier tiers and content you're roughly getting from it like though usually think i for a lot of uh, tabletop dabs i'm seeing around usually in the hundred mark it's like a quote established pay, uh, established creator it's like a hundred dollars but usually when things get a little bit more suspicious is when it's like an absurd amount of money or it's like, hmm, I wonder why, or, oh, he's hidden his Patreon money, but he's still, he definitely is making money because I can see how many people are donating, which, here, yeah, like, Swords Fall, that was such a weird con case because he moved all his Patreon stuff to his website, but he was still had his Patreon open, which I thought was a little bit suspicious because it wasn't enough that you would notice it, but it was enough that you would still be like, that's a lot of money, that you're taking every month to do nothing with, effectively. That's like, that's a hmm, that's a hmm moment. Uh, Ushi Bean Productions. Have you pumped out any other games? Tell me. Tell me, Ushi Bean. No, this is just his personal Twitter. Yeah, no, he hasn't updated this in months, nor do I think he will. So this is his 
Yeah, fucking VTubers. Jesus. Only VTubers. I should become a VTuber. Yeah, because one thing I remember about this was that he posted this in Monster Girl World Building, and everyone was like, wow, this is really cool, and he's using the pants system again. Who did this goddamn game? Who did pants? Pool and, and number target system. Because he gave it the name. I have no idea who actually did this goddamn system. I'm going to ask him. Oh, it was? Hmm, that's actually interesting. So yeah, I think this guy... This guy is a noted fat guy. I do know that. He he has been in multiple threads. And I don't know if it's just because he's a TTRPG guy or he wants to, to shill. I don't know. I always get worried about people when it comes to that. I remember, I remember the Lancer issues. I was there. But overall, it looks pretty... Exactly kind of like what we were doing last time. Like Niragaku. It looks like a lot of... You know, meta current I fucking hate meta currencies. Social encounters, combat. I remember when people... When he put out Mate on... The... On uh, MGW. People were like, wow, this is really mermaid focused. And then nobody cared. Because it was too mermaid focused. Uh, because he doesn't... MGW kind of hates everything that isn't strict, strictly a Monster Girl Encyclopedia. Oh, you got derived attributes. Mm. Wait a second. Wait a second. Cy I have a cyborg body, your consciousness and habits. Oh, sweet God, it's Eclipse Phase. It was always Eclipse Phase. <laughs> So, alright, I think that's probably one of the, uh, main reasons why this didn't really take off. Okay. Alright, so, uh, give me a second. I need to, I'm just gonna put this right here. Uh, ah, can't, yeah, let me just put this right here. Okay. And if it's good, I can, I can do this. However, I am going to, so... Here's your mermaids. I don't think they drew this. I think this is one of their people. Okay, so now we need to go back. Hit, put this here. Okay, no fish tits. Here's here's mermaids. Mer shark. You can always tell that someone has you know someone does enjoy have their particular. Okay, give me a sec. I'm I'm seeing some. Seen something scandalous here, and I can't af Wait, did he cover up everything? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm literally just going through just to make sure, okay. Looks like he did... Looks like he did cover up everything, like a good boy, so I can actually show that. So, you can always tell that someone has... Uh, yeah, no, it's actually, again, it's a neat system, neat game. I remember reading through the first edition when he first posted it, and I thought, wow, this is pretty interesting, and we'll get no traction here, because it's not, you know, you can't fuck a kobold or something. You know, you can't fuck an anime girl with animal ears, so no one's gonna like it. Yeah, I know, but, like, the artwork in general, there's a lot of effort and a lot of heart that went into this, and I enjoy that, because, again, obviously somebody, somebody cared at some point, That just looks terrifying. Oh, that looks awful. That looks terrible. Oh, that... Oh, God. No. Yeah, I know. Mind you, I've never been a fan of the ocean. Like, ocean stuff. Like, ocean animals scare the crap out of me. So all of these, and it's like... 
Yes, you know, <laughs> it's that ball, buddy. You know, I really shouldn't stick my dick in this, but... Except me, let's say, I shouldn't really look at this, and then I walk away, because fish terrify me. Uh, yeah, that's a, that, that's cut, that's cutting the line there real fast, but we should be okay. He's a quacking. Don't worry, everyone. We found cancer. Oh, yeah, um, uh, mate, actually. Yeah. Here's what I can do. But a bum. I can look down in. Da -da 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 submissions. Anyway, if you look in submissions in the uh, white room, you'll find it. Yeah, it looks like some pretty basic talents here. Yeah, but it's some... It's fairly narrative. I am not personally a fan, like, super, super uber-duber. Uh, I actually have a Discord uh, called My Notepad's White Room, in which I discuss games. And discuss my own stuff, and also has a ping notification anytime I do stream. Because sometimes I forget to. Let's ping elsewhere. So if you would like a link to that, just ask, and I will I will provide one. But Oh god, there's no priority system. Uh, Jesus. Oh wait a second. Okay, okay, we gotta we gotta bring up bring up the, the clover. Okay, uh, no taste okay, that that's cutting it close. That's okay. Okay, so we're good, we're good. <laughs> Notepad won't be getting sent to the shadow realm today. Uh alright, give me one second, let me just um, uh, and such. Du, 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 du. I should really cave entrance, create invite. Merry Christmas. So I think these are probably like the big boy ones. By the way, the several special frames, normal play Leviathan, Mind Flayer, Angler Spish. So these are your special superpower. Oh jeez, look at these fucking stats. Nine nine eight four, three armor. So let's go up to Yeah, eight eight two, so that's twenty. Actually, no, that's 18, so it would be 16, 16 plus 2, and so that would be 18, 21, 6, 6, so that would be 12, 19, 20. These numbers aren't even! I guess you have more things. But yeah, no, these are, ooh, oh boy. Yeah, I remember this. Yeah, Mind Flare. This is the one that he kept posting everywhere in Mouse Girl World Building. Every single place. He was just like, let's let's talk about Mind Flayers. And I was like, no. Yeah, good old fashioned angler fish. Uh t t nothing too nothing too bad. Game Astering, oh, oh god, oh, oh god. Uh, let's, we still got a lot of, looks like a lot of setting stuff. Yeah, pre-written adventures and stuff like that, like nothing too, nothing 
too exciting. Here is your... It, it's one of those things as well, like, you end up with a very simplistic game. There's nothing wrong with being a simple game. But very narrativist. Perfect for streaming, not gonna lie. Hmm. This came out, yeah, about... Not a year, not even a year ago, about six months ago. So... Let's uh, scroll all the way to the top. Let's make this go away. So that brings us to an end to our wonderful little adventure here. Thank you all for, for for accompanying me on my terrifying, you know, adventure down the rabbit hole when it comes to the horrifying world of tabletop RPGs produced by TG. Now, anytime I find more, I will be adding them to my list, and I will probably do another Dusty Closet later on. Not, there won't be next week or anything like that. Uh, on my list of ones to do anyway, I need to do Halo Mythic. That originated as a TG project, Halo Mythic, which is like the, like the big Halo tabletop RPG. And any other project that I kind of find to that exists but has somewhat fallen out of favor, I might theme them, such as such as failed Fallout games or you know failed conversions or something like that, or games that are still around. You know, I I might do that. I might not. I don't know if I want to theme things. This had absolutely no theme whatsoever. But so uh, thank you all. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, most likely the initial poll for... Actually, what I should do. And... Uh, the polls will be going out here soon. Uh, as you can see here. <laughs> Our, our personal, we're doing going to be doing two polls of what people kind of are looking for. I'm going to try to break this down to five and then bring it out to the masses to see what people will actually want from it. So overall, our personal projects are either going to be Dreaming of the Badlands, Project Speed, Endless Adventures, Eagles and Rifles, Fear and Hunger, Forgot Chronicles, Lisa Badlands Rumble, Yige Jungle of the Game, uh, Abandon All Hope 2, I want a Podia Nekobia. Okasan's Big Happy Family. Well, the Omega Men. These are my personal projects that I plan on doing. And all of the various Redux projects throughout the year that I'm going to have to update to second edition. Which will take time and effort and make me want to die internally. But what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna put out a poll on the in the white room. And then once in the white room, I'll let people vote on it. Let people decide, hey, I want this, hey, I want that. And from there, I'll compile the victors and have the greater community vote on it using straw poll. Because I am nothing but a democratic soul. But uh, thank you all. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. If you have any final questions, now you're trying to ask. But I will be wrapping up here in a minute or two. So, ask away. Oh yeah, all the YouTube stuff should be updated up, updated soon, TM. I'm going to try to get those done tomorrow. There was a, um, uh, there was a lot. I realized there's a, there's a lot to do on the, on, on the YouTube front. A lot to do. An absurd amount to do. Alright. So I will depart. Godspeed. Good luck.